And it's time for our visit with uh, Dr. K, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. And good morning to you, uh, Dr. K. How are you today? Uh, good morning, Jack. Very good. Good. Uh, Dr. Cavanaugh is a retired physician, also the founder of a national organization, Health Watch USA. And the big, the big thing this morning that we're talking about, of course, the vaccine. A group of nine drug company CEOs have signed a pledge not to skip any testing or safety procedures in the rush to develop a coronavirus vaccine. And uh, part of that story, AstraZeneca, who looked like they were really making the great strides, has uh, put their testing uh, to a halt right now because one of their uh, participants uh, came down with something. What can you tell us about that? Well, really don't know. I can just speculate. But I can tell you, Jack, that making vaccines is a very long process. You have to do it carefully. And to have a vaccine by the end of the year, we'll be pushing it. I do agree that into next year will probably be the earliest. On average, phase three trials take 30 months to complete. And let's, let's look at this virus. This virus is a tough one because as you know, it causes in the elderly and in many patients who are severely sick, a hyperimmune response. So in the vaccine, you want it to, one, cause immunity. You don't want it to have no immunity, but you just want it to produce the immune response, which will be helpful. You don't want it to produce a hyperimmune response. So all of this needs to be done carefully. It needs to be done over a period of time where the patients are followed and you're looking at both effectiveness and also safety. And the thing that I found peculiar from the get-go is that most of our eggs, when we put them into the companies we were pushing forward, were using a technology which wasn't used before. Moderna, along with a number of other companies, are using an RNA type of vaccine where the RNA of that virus, a particular little snippet of RNA, is put into another virus, for example, a monkey adenovirus, and that is given to the human cells, in other words, the person or patient, and they use that RNA to actually produce the antigens which the body will be immune to. Other types of vaccines or standard vaccines just give deactivated viruses or the antigens themselves to the patient to become immune to. So this is really untested technology so I'm not really surprised that some of these first actors are really not going to pan out. And don't be discouraged by this. There's 160 plus companies developing vaccines. And no one thought that anywhere near half of them were going to be effective. So it looks like one is in trouble, but we've got many others in the pike. Getting it done before elections probably won't happen. Okay. Now, we're hearing a big push now on getting your flu shot, and this is obviously very early for what we're used to doing. And do you recommend people go ahead, in light of the uh, coronavirus, go ahead and get that flu shot now? Well, sure. I would recommend following advice of the CDC and our public health officials. I do want to put a caveat that if you think you're an asymptomatic carrier or you have an active case of the coronavirus, don't get the flu shot at that time. You don't want to get the flu plus the coronavirus at the same time, nor do you want to overrun our healthcare system. And believe me, if you've got the flu and the coronavirus at the same time, you're in trouble. For example, steroids, great benefit for the coronavirus, contraindicated for the flu. So you would be in huge trouble. It is possible that we'll have a dud of a flu pandemic if everybody were to wear masks and social distance. That should readily snuff out our flu pandemic. But that probably isn't going to happen in the United States. I mean, realistically, there are just not enough people that have bought in to public health advice. So get your heard flu yesterday, shot. I heard yesterday that Australia has had a very mild flu season we hope we'll uh, transfer over to us. Hey, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jack.